Hey friends, it's Mel. Welcome to my kitchen. Thank you so much for being here for another What's for Dinner. This week, I've got two ground beef dishes that are full of flavor and sure to please you and your family. And I have a man-loving potato recipe that is going to be the star of this video. So if that sounds good to you, just kick back, relax, grab your sweet tea, and let me do the cooking. Hey friends, it's Mel. Welcome to my kitchen. And if this is your first time here, a real special welcome to you. Tonight, I've got another What's for Dinner video. It's been a rainy, rainy Monday here. I got my coffee heated up and let's make us a taco ring. Okie dokie, friends. Taco ring. You may have seen this before. Maybe not. Maybe I'll have something new and exciting to show you. But this is an old recipe from Pampered Chef Home Parties. It's one of them crescent roll recipes. I got to thinking the other day I hadn't made anything with crescent rolls or even my crock pot, which is unlike me. It's been a few weeks. And this recipe does just take a half a pound of ground beef. But I'm going to go ahead and brown up a whole pound and I'll just put the other half back in the freezer and already have it cooked up for something. Now, I have made this before many, many times, but I have made it with just one roll of crescents. Usually, you use two rolls, two cans of crescent rolls to a half a pound of hamburger meat. Now, I've done it, like I said, with one roll, and it's really good. It makes it just a whole lot more meat in it, but definitely the half a pound is fine. But um, if you just have one roll of crescents, hey, you can make this. You just won't have as many little pieces to eat. Um, but you might say, okay, then you're going to have just a half a pound of hamburger meat left in the freezer. What can you do with that? Well... Number one, you could make yourself another taco ring someday. <laughs> Number two, if you keep this in your pantry, which I absolutely love this right here. I really just use jarred spaghetti sauces in like things that I'm going to bake up, like pasta bakes, or if I'm putting it in a lasagna or a recipe. If I'm making spaghetti for the family, I like to use this right here, and normally I'll use two of these, and then I'll freeze whatever's left, but you have one pack of this, one small six ounce can of tomato paste, and that's all you need for this thick and zesty spaghetti sauce. McCormick's also makes this, it's very good, but if you look on the back of the directions, you can put meat in this, and just for one of these, it takes half a pound. Also, if you're just a small family, and it's just you and your husband, any of these recipes that I show you with ground beef, and I have a ton of ground beef recipes because it's cheap and readily available. Not as cheap as it used to be, but it's still cheap by comparison to what else is out there. But you can take any of the ground beef recipes that I show you and you can have them if you just have a small family and really there's four of us and a lot of times the ground beef casseroles and meals even though there's four of us we'll eat out of them at supper and you know I always put like a big salad with my meals or a couple of small sides and it just makes the food stretch further and we, even a family of four, and we're all adults, you know, my kids, they may not eat quite as much as a, a boy would, but my girls are grown-ups, and a lot of times we'll still have leftovers. We can eat out of it another night, one or two of us can, and lunches. Me and Callie take leftovers for lunch a lot. I'll try my best not to bore you. There's something about it I've noticed. Whenever I get over here at this frying pan, it's like a confessional. Things just start coming out. I just start talking and I don't ever shut up. 
so I will try to do my best to rain myself in here tonight. And you're in luck. It's not taking long at all for this ground beef to get browned up. So I won't be here at the frying pan confessional for too awful long tonight. They always have those nice big pizza stones in Pampered Chef. And I used to have one of those. But I think it broke or something. But anyhow, I just used this pizza pan right here. I've even been able to make this just on a regular rectangle cookie sheet because I've just, I've made it a bunch of times. But here's what you do. You're going to make a circle out of your crescents. And if you leave the circle in the middle big enough, you can make a really pretty presentation with this. Like if you were making it for a little get together or something, you could make it so pretty. And what you do is you just pull them apart and you take the pointed side to the outside and you just start sort of overlapping them. And we've got a nice little circle here with our crescent rolls all kind of touching and overlapping on the inside. And then we have all the little points to the outside. Now, once this gets done, it's going to be so pretty and this will all be open. And what you could do is cut the top out of like a green bell pepper. This is how they used to do it. And... You would put your salsa, you would set it up in here, put your salsa down in that green bell pepper, then you would mound all around it. Lettuce, onions, olives, cheese, any of the toppings that you like on a taco right around the middle. And then you have your pretty ring that's going to be all baked up here. Let's do the filling and I'll show you how to finish this up. Okay, I've drained all the grease off of this pound of hamburger meat. I've got half of the pound in here. The other half I'm letting cool to freeze. This is all you do. You take the entire dry packet of taco seasoning. You noticed I didn't put it in it when I was cooking it. And you use the whole packet to half a pound of meat, a couple of tablespoonfuls of water. I'm just going to grab that over here. Then you just use one cup of cheddar cheese and you mix all this together. Sometimes you may have to throw you a, just a tad bit more of water in here just to make the taco seasoning stick to the meat and the cheese. Sometimes you may just need a little tiny bit more water for that. But you just work it like this. Okay, now I've got my filling all mixed up here. Then you're just going to go around and fill in all around your little crescents here. And I just use this big spoon and go around it like this and kind of lay it down. And this is so flavorful. Using that entire envelope of the taco seasoning on just this half pound of meat and just using it dry like that, not putting the water and stuff like you do whenever you cook it up for taco meat. It is very, very flavorful. And you need that because you have all this bread dough that's going to be, you know, coming up around it. You don't want it to be bland. You want lots of flavor to come through. And it's okay if it gets off down in here. It's a little messy, at least I am at first, but I just come through at the end and fill in where I have any bare spots and pick up all that stuff that's kind of went into the center. This is definitely one of those little recipes that is so quick and so easy. And any of these little things that you do with the crescents where you make the rings and the braids, they look so fancy and like you have really done something and it's just so easy. Nobody ever has to know. Now, all you're going to do is take your points and just pull them over. And I just always tuck mine under. Just going to go around this whole little taco ring here. You're going to have places where the meat shows, and it's supposed to be like that. 
because these crescents will puff up around it and you'll still see some little places open when it comes out but that just makes it all the more pretty and I have my oven heated to 375 and the instructions on this say to bake it 20 to 25 minutes I always start checking mine at 15 minutes because my oven really bakes quick so there you go and I did get a little further off on that side but that's okay let's put it in and then I'll show you what we got you can see how beautiful and brown the crescents get in this taco ring and that cheesy taco filling is delicious. Just imagine how beautiful that would be all presented with all the fixings in the middle of it. I like to use my pizza cutter just to slice mine. It is very quick and easy that way. This is definitely a meal that my family loves and I make this a lot of times for Christmas Eve when we're doing finger foods. It just can't be beat. Quick, easy, inexpensive, and many times you probably have these ingredients on hand to make this on a minute's notice. And now is one of my husband's very favorite meals. It is this crock pot Salisbury steak. And I always start out by just doing the very little bit of chopping that this recipe requires. I slice up a little sweet onion and then I'll dice up just a little bit as well. We're going to start out making the liquid mixture that will go over this in our crock pot. I'm making some beef broth out of this bouillon pack. The recipe calls for a cup and a half, and I may have stretched this just a little bit further, but it's fine. Into that beef broth, you're going to add in a one ounce pack of brown gravy mix. The packet I have is a little bit smaller, but again, it is fine. It all just comes out wonderful. Into that, you're going to put in two tablespoons of ketchup. One teaspoon of Dijon mustard. And about two tablespoons of parsley. And you're just going to mix all of this up together. And I am prepping this the night before. So I'm actually going to do everything and put it in the refrigerator so I can have this as a dump and go type meal in the morning. So once all this is mixed, I'm just going to set it aside and then we'll get started on our beef patties. I'm using a pound and a half of 80-20 ground chuck. Into that, I'm putting one egg yolk with about three tablespoons of milk. And then I'm putting in about a fourth cup of minced onion. And if you did not have raw onion, you could definitely use the dehydrated onion flakes in this. I'm putting in about a third a cup of panko and just a spoonful of chopped garlic. I'm also going to throw in some salt and pepper to season this up as well. Then you're just going to mix everything together and I can usually get six patties out of a pound and a half of meat and that's the perfect size for us. And I am even browning these up the night before and I'll just let them cool and then I'll put all of this in the refrigerator. And I'm also saving the grease and all the drippings off of this. I'm just going to put it into the liquid mixture that I made and stir it up real good. I'll put a piece of press and seal over that and put it in the fridge and it will be just fine. Now the next morning all I'm doing is putting some of this onion down in the bottom of my crock pot. I did spray it with nonstick spray. Then I'm going to lay those patties out that I have browned up the night before and I'm going to pour the liquid over it. You'll see some of that fat has solidified and that is perfectly fine. This is going to cook all day on low. You really just have to let it cook about four or five hours, but mine goes about eight and it always turns out perfect. Of 
when I get home, you can see how pretty this looks. It's all browned up and that gravy has turned out beautifully. Now I just like to move all of my hamburger steaks over to the side and thicken my gravy a bit. I use a couple spoonfuls of flour and water to make a slurry. If you have cornstarch, you can use that just as well. I just put it in here and I'm going to stir it up real good and it will just immediately begin to thicken. But never panic, just bury those steaks back under there, put the lid on it, turn it up on high where you're making the rest of your meal and it will all turn out fine in the end. This night I made some instant mashed potatoes and of course we had a big side salad. I want you to look how tender and juicy this is. It just cuts like butter. This is my husband's absolute favorite crock pot meal. I think I've said before, he's not the biggest fan of crock pot meals, but this is one that he absolutely loves. The gravy's perfect, the instant mashed potatoes are fine and dandy. And if that wasn't enough for him this week, when I saw this man loving potato recipe, I knew I had to make it for him. So I have scrubbed about eight to ten red potatoes and I'm just slicing them about a quarter inch thick. I'm also going to go ahead and get the red onion chopped up for this. It did call for about half of a red onion diced. To get this recipe moving you're going to take all those potatoes that you've cut up and you're going to boil them about medium low heat for 10 to 15 minutes and you want to salt them really really well and my pot was a little small but I had already committed to using it so it worked out fine. While your potatoes are cooking we're going to mix up the little dressing type stuff that we're going to mix them into and it starts with one cup of mayonnaise and I'm putting in a half a cup of sour cream going to use about a tablespoon of onion powder and a tablespoon of garlic powder. Also going to throw in about a teaspoon of salt and pepper each to season this up. It also calls for about three-fourths cup of chopped up bacon. I'm just using some store-bought bacon pieces that I had. And the recipe calls for about two cups of American cheese. I used cheddar because that's what I had and I probably didn't use a full two cups either. This was looking pretty rich to me. Put in that red onion that you've diced up and just mix everything up really good. My potatoes have finished boiling and I've let them set drained just a little while and now I'm going to put them into this mixture and just very gently toss and coat them the best I can in this mixture. You want to be careful not to break them up too much more. They're not all the way done but some of them will be a little tender. Then I'm going to turn them out into a greased 9 by 13 casserole dish. Now I thought about a crunchy topping for this, but honestly, this was just enough. It says to put three tablespoons of Parmesan cheese over the top. I did just get three little pinches and put it over the top and that was plenty topping for this recipe. This is so rich and so delicious. Going to put that in that 350 degree oven for about 35 to 40 minutes and look how gooey and yummy. When that comes out, it looks like it has a stick of butter in it or something, but that's just all the oil off your mayonnaise and your sour cream and your bacon. This was so delicious. I just served this up with some of these Walmart chicken strips that I cooked up in the air fryer. And we had our big salad as always. And I am still using the seafood seasoning on everything. I'm totally hooked on it. I love sprinkling it on my salad every week. These man loving potatoes. 
You know a catchy name always gets my attention on a recipe. I just knew I had to make it for Patrick. I don't know if they call him this because your man will love him or he'll love you for making him or you'll love making him or all the above. But it's all true. These were so good. We enjoyed them so much. Not something you can have all the time, but definitely a treat. Friends, thank you so much for being here this week. I never take for granted the time you set aside to watch my videos. And if you are seeing this as it has gone live, it is Memorial Day weekend. I pray that you have a safe, blessed, and beautiful weekend. And I want to say a special thank you to all those who have given their life in service of our country. We are so appreciative and we would never forget the sacrifices that you have made. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you next week. And until then, as always, I send you love from my kitchen.